Welcome back to another episode of One Wingspan Above, where we discuss anything to do with ground effects. In this episode, we have a lot of news to cover. We get up to date with YouTube projects and cover news from existing and new companies. Let's get skimming. Our ground effect home builder, James Greenberger from Australia, was in a bit of a skier. Both James and his wife were skimming along nicely in their mud skipper, as they have been doing many, many times before, when they crashed into the water as James lost pitch control. Or as he states it in his YouTube comments, I had an elevator cable issue. From the raw footage that James posted, you can see the crash, where luckily James and his wife both got out okay with just cuts and bruises. He's now rebuilding his craft, which he states is harder than building from scratch. I'm sure that anyone who owns an old house can attest to this. Sometimes it feels like you're building a new house with an existing house in the way. James stated in the comments that the improvements will be a thicker cable for the controls and dual cable for the up elevator. He's had a scare before when a craft that was testing for someone else had a mishap with the elevator as well, where a pulley that guided a control gable let go. He's not having a lot of luck with pitch control. But now though, he patched his green monster, licked his wounds and is back skimming the Australian waters. Skim safe, James. Like James, Ben is a home builder and he has built his own helicopter before, but now he's trying to build his own skim machine. He bought an amphibious Microlite Flexwing, which is a flying inflatable boat. His plan is to convert the craft into a ground effect vehicle. He talked to his fellow UK countryman, Caster Hayes, who made a skim machine that he called the Aquaplane K42. Caster has made quite a few hours in his Aquaplane, he works in the paramotor industry as a test pilot, design and development engineer, and his craft follows some of the paramotor design features. Ben, so far, has tested the propulsion for his skin machine, he plants some wings, and has fabricated the tail. So a fair way to go, but we'll follow him along the journey and keep you in the loop. Jake Laser produces a YouTube channel called Laser Video, where he creates very entertaining and at the same moment educational content. He blows life into contraptions that might only exist in movies and video games. In the current video, he develops a real life hoverboard from the Back to the Future movies. Many attempts have been made to do this, but never fully satisfactory, as most would only work on certain surfaces or have other drawbacks. Jake actually took a leaf out of the playbook of Glide Air, more on them later, and made the hoverboard based on a skirtless hovercraft. He essentially strapped 27 electric ducted fans together and tried to balance on it. To his credit, it worked reasonably well. And as a by the by, check out his solution for self-lacing boots. His solution using nitinol wire is spot on and the shoes look awesome. The hoverboard worked well and it was limited in power to ground effect only. He even took the board for a spin in front of the house and the diner from the original movie, resulting in some epic footage. He also tried to fly the hoverboard above water. Unfortunately, as we all know from the movies, they don't work over water. Two years of development and $40,000 gone down the drain in a very short few minutes. Glide Air is a YouTube channel with a large variety of projects, but most are about RC hovercraft. Some videos are of ground effect craft, but the majority are skirtless hovercraft. The skirt and hovercraft has always been the most maintenance sensitive part of the conventional hovercraft. They require a lot of upkeep, so it makes sense to try and eliminate the skirt from the hovercraft. You do lose the pressure under the hull more easily though, as the whole point of the skirt is to keep the air under the hull. In one of Glide Air's newer projects, he tries out a hybrid cross of a skirtless hovercraft and a ground effect vehicle, and evaluates the concept of ground effect in relation to his craft. It stays in ground effect unless you add too much power, he states. 
he makes a very good point here, which is essentially the holy grail of ground effects. How do you make a true ground effect craft? RC Test Flight have also tried to make a craft that tries to do this, but hasn't quite succeeded. Clyde here has got his own definition of what a skim machine might be. He states, supported by an ear cushion generated entirely by forward movements. Does not have the power to escape the ground effect region. Increased drag and reduced lift away from ground effect makes free flight impossible. Stabilization of pitch, roll and heights are provided passively through interaction with the ground. Only controls are for direct forward thrust and turning. So throttle and rudder only. Interesting note here is that James Greenberger noticed with his Smutskipper craft that the rudder actually rolls the craft into corners as well. And also says that the elevator makes the craft more usable over a larger speed range, which Clyde Air mentions as well. So in essence, this makes the elevator a trim surface to trim for pitch based on speed rather than direct up and down motion control. Clyde Air uses air channels or side jets to contain the air cushion in his skirtless hovercraft. Adding the ground effect wings, he says, adds pitch stability. RC Test Flight gave making a ground effect quadcopter a shot. He had mixed results and did some measuring which blades were more efficient in ground effect. But interesting enough, he also reverted his design back to the skirtless hovercraft that we've seen talking about the laser video and glide air. It must be the season for skirtless hovercraft. He also had issues with pitch stability with his skirtless hovercraft. So I was surprised to see he didn't add wings like Glide Air did, which seems like an obvious step since he's got experience there. Perhaps in a further video he might explore this. Oceanfly is a New Zealand company that's ordered sea gliders from region to fly here in New Zealand. In a previous presentation, as you can rewatch here, Oceanfly states that the Viceroy is a Type B skim machine, but in his recent presentation, Oceanflyer is now stating that C gliders are Type A. The difference between A and B is that Type A, the craft, is bound to ground effect, whereas Type B, the craft, could do emergency hops. John Hamilton, Operations Director at Oceanflyer, also mentioned there were no rudder pedals in the C glider, and that there is a direct pitch and roll control, which surprised us a little bit. What we understood from previous information is the pilot would only have direct inputs in thrust, direction and state, which is float, foil and fly. And that the computer control system would take care of the rest being the pitch and roll control. It could be, however, that we misheard as the zoom connection into the meeting was quite bad. During a Series A round, Regions themselves announced that it raised $60 million in Series A funding, bringing the company's total funding to date to $90 million. They state the new funding fully capitalizes their full-scale prototype build and test program with crewed flight in 2024 and keeps the company on track to certify, manufacture and deliver its sea gliders to customers by mid-decade. 2024 will be an exciting year. Perhaps they can do for Grand Effect what Tesla has done for electric cars. Equalines are a company based in Bayonne, France, that are developing skin machines that use a low aspect wing and they call these Navi planes. They look like Volga Ecorona plants that have power trust engines at the front, but with added cruise engines at the back. This makes sense as RDC Equilines actually originates from a Russian company based in the birthplace of Ekrana plants, Nizhny Novgorod, with Russian Pavel Tarapkin as the co-founder. Together with Frenchman Lauren Gordon and Guillaume Gatala, Equilines have gained some media coverage recently as they have been seen to partner up with the R&D department of Alpine Formula 1. They seem to be releasing information sparsely. The website has got very little information, but the Instagram has got some more specifics. 
They quote a blue mobility for which I believe they refer to transport over water. Pavel confirms in an online article that Aqualines has several projects on its books. He says they are studying a whole range of vehicles that can carry two persons to 300 passengers. The technological principle remains the same. Then it's just a question of economic efficiency depending on the uses. For now, he says they are focusing on the two-seater model as a demonstrator of the concept, following which they will choose which project to market first. There should be between 12 and 50 passengers. The smaller version they introduced on their Instagram as the Aquas Cruiser. They boasted to be the only fully electric navy plane, which seems to be selling region short. They state that the Aquas Cruiser carries up to four people and can reach a speed of 120 kilometers an hour. Their render only seems to depict a maximum of two people. After numerous small-scale tests, the Bayon-based startup is starting to build a full-scale prototype. The first full-scale tests are planned for the beginning of 2024. This is in line with what Regent are doing as well. But Aqualines are only doing this with a smaller version. In the meantime, they carried out wind tunnel tests in the Enstone wind tunnel to gather information for the design. For the rest, there is not much technical information released on these navy planes, so we'll wait till more is made public. Aurora's Liberty Lifter is not just your average aircraft. It's pushing the boundaries of what's possible in heavy lift cargo transportation. Let's break down the key highlights. Firstly, Aurora has made significant changes to the Liberty Lifter's design. Shifting from a traditional T-tail to a more efficient pie-tail configuration. This adjustment allows for better structural integrity, especially crucial for accommodating an aft cargo door. But that's not all. The relocation from the floats from the side sponsons to the wingtips strikes a balance between affordability and performance, particularly in ground effect operations. Partnering with Recon Craft, experts in maritime manufacturing, Aurora is leveraging cutting-edge techniques to construct full-scale structural test articles. They're testing scale models of the hull at Virginia Tech to simulate real-world landing conditions. And let's not forget about General Atomics, developing competing design to keep the competition fierce. Airfish SD Engineering, in partnership with a Singapore-based startup, is making waves with their Airfish technology. The Airfish 8 has been around for a while and originally had been developed by ground effect legend Hanno Fischer. He took over the Rhein Flugzeugbau RFB company and established his own venture, Fischer Flug Mechanic, which ultimately completed two models. The Airfish 3 was designed to accommodate two individuals, while the FS-8 was capable of carrying up to six passengers. The FS-8, that was intended for development under the Singapore-Australian collaboration named Flightship, was powered by a V8 Chevrolet automobile engine with a rating of 337 kilowatts. Its inaugural flight took place in February 2001 in the Netherlands. While Fischer Flugmechanik is no longer in operation, the prototype aircraft was acquired by Widgetworks, a Singapore-based company, and rebranded the Airfish 8. In 2010, this craft was officially registered as a ship in the Singapore Registry of Ships. As the Engineering Air X recently inked a deal with Eurasia Mobility Solutions in Turkey for the first order of up to 10 Airfish wing ground aircraft, with options for 10 more. Now let's take a closer look at the Airfish 8. With dimensions of 17 meters in length and 15 meters in width, it can comfortably accommodate up to eight passengers. Its sleek design, coupled with advanced aerodynamics, allows it to achieve speeds up to 90 knots, covering distances up to 300 nautical miles. It's powered by an eight-cylinder automotive engine running a 95 octane unleaded petrol. The Airfish 8 ensures a smooth and efficient journey for passengers. Additionally, it adheres to the International Maritime Organization guidelines as a Type A craft. For now, thank you for watching. 
keep in the loop by hitting the subscribe button and we'll see you here for the next episode of One Wingspan Above. Keep on skimming.